Is that overkill? Yes, it is. But now I'll add a Zool 1 10 gig and 8 port 8 gig at home for my firewall. Because being a tech guy means using enterprise solution at home. But let's rewind. This is my AX55 uh, router. It's a Wi-Fi 6 router and nothing wrong is with it. Well, actually one thing is wrong. And that's an issue I have with consumer base like router for a long time. It's the lack of security update after a year or two. You buy one and then maybe once or two times a year, you'll get a security update like for one or two years and then they stop. And then the issue is that like you will have a lot of device that will be unprotected and having potentially security issue with them. So of course it encouraged people to buy new device to get at the same time faster speed, but I still think it's wasteful. And even if resources are limited, at least like if it's possible, let it support like open WRT or something like that. So when Ingenious uh, contacted me and said that they wanted to send me their Wi-Fi 7 access point, I was excited because I wanted to see if Wi-Fi 7 would make a difference in the law environment I am. Now, the main issue is that uh, fiber is not going to my building. So even if I have a gig connection, I'm going to be limited at like max copper speed and it's maybe around like 950 Mbps. So eventually when I move, uh, I hope that I'll be able to get like 2.5 or 4 gig like internet connection and make things way faster. But I mean, 1 gig is totally fine. Like I download like Xbox Live games super fast. So it's not really an issue. But when they contacted me about the Wi-Fi 7, I was like, hmm. My issue was like, I'm gonna have like my wired connection then. The easiest way would have been to just take this router, turn off Wi-Fi, and just use it as a wired connection. But of course, then my problem with security update would stay. So then the other idea is, was to use an older router that a friend has and use w, uh, OpenWRT. But then I decided to get a mini PC and said, oh, I'll use PFSense on it and use my one gig switch uh, for having multiple port because it had a dual uh, one. I already did a review of that mini PC, but while I was uh, prepping to do the review of the access point, I received the gateway. So now we're gonna test the gateway then the access point in a second video and it's possible there's a third video with uh, one of my two friends that are a network administrator for maybe the last 15 years so the idea was to do an introduction to ingenious networking so as a new user i mean i've been working in it at my day job for the like last 20 years but it's more on the database and reporting and ai like side of things even if i know networking but I'm not a network administrator, so I thought it would be interesting for me to just go blind, install it, configure the access point after the firewall, and then maybe look with one of my friends that is a network engineer, like where is that project situated versus the competition? What uh, are the main feature and drawback versus like product uh, from competitors? So let's do a quick unboxing first. Ingenious seems to aim for small to medium business side on the enterprise level. This is a cloud only solution. There's not many settings offline, which we will see a little later. You will need to make a Ingenious cloud account. We see here is their SD1 gateway with eight ports at 2.5 gig each. You have the legal disclaimer on the size of the box about the maximum data rate and the FCC notice. When you open the box, you have a card with the mobile app and the quick start QR code. I already uh, made the ingenious account before uh, doing the setup. 
for the accessory, you have one power connector, one console connector, uh, some rubber feet and some server bracket, depending on where you want to put it. We have a top down view here. The body is all aluminum and there's a weight for uh, to it. It does feel like it's solid and well built. You have some ventilation on the side for the air intake. And you have a small fan on the other side. I was worried about the noise that those tiny laptop fan could make. And I was right a little more on that later. Under it, you have the uh, space to put the rubber feet if you want. It's what I did here because for now it's not going to be in a server rack. On the back, you have uh, the input for power. The power supply is a 300 watt uh, PSU because it's also support PoE for four ports. Starting from the left, you have one console port. Then you have one W1 port if you want to put a cellular connection for a fail back. Then you have the 101 port, so two 10 gig ports. Then you have the 12 port, which is part of the four ports that are at 2.5 gig but without PoE. And then we have the four PoE port, so power over Ethernet. Let's do the setup now. The first thing to know is that if you would like to try the Ingenious Cloud, you can. There's a demo version available. So if you go at this URL and click on the demo button, it will then take you to this login page. And if you click to live demo, it will log you in and you will see the dashboard. So this way you can try the cloud a little. It's also great to take screenshot if there's part that has too much like inform uh, private information in it. So go try it out. So the first thing I did even before opening the box is created uh, a cloud account. So I signed up uh, on this page. Like I said, this device is cloud only. So what I did is I plug my laptop uh, in one of the ethernet port and then uh, I plug uh, my cable modem in bridge mode in one of the 10 gig port. That was a mistake. I realized later that it was not a ARG uh, 45 10 gig it's you know for fibers so i needed to plug um, the modem in the one two port internet port and then after uh, rebooting this uh, the gateway and my cable modem everything got detected when you log in for the first time there's a quick tutorial section so it will teach you what every section is it's useful to know the interface a little better, but of course you can skip it if you don't want it. Now, if you want to add the device in Ingenious Cloud, there's two options. In the app, you can uh, scan the QR code that is under the device, or you can add a device in the web interface and type the serial number. It's what I did here. So both of my device would show up after I did that. You can see now that the gateway is detected and it's online. You will also have a menu if you want to update to the last firmware. The dashboard section is basically where you're going to get all the information about your device, but it's not where you're going to configure them. It took me a little while to figure that out. You will have different information about the gateway there and uh, how much the bandwidth was split between client and machine name. So there's a lot of like useful information to parse through. I'm still only at the beginning of it, learning more. Because it's cloud only, they will also prompt you to add two-factor authentication and it's a very good idea to do. So I set it up at the beginning. The configure section is where you're going to change all the settings. In our case, we'll go in gateway. You have 5 ZTEM there, interface, site-to-site -site VPN, client VPN, firewall, and security service. So in the interface uh, section in the one tab, you will have your information for one number one and one number two. Also, 
for your DNS and your W1 card if you decide to have a card with a cell phone as a fallback. If your network is down, you can configure it there. Also, if you want to use redundancy, it's where you would set it up there. In the LAN section, you'll have the LAN information. And if you decide to create some VLAN, they will also be there. If you choose add an interface, you can see here the menu. I will definitely need to dig deeper in those menu. I didn't define VPN or client VPN. So the other section I spent a little time was the firewall. You can see that you have access to the layer tree, but layer seven is gray out because you need to pay for a subscription for that. But you can add your TCP rule over there if you need. You can also do some power forwarding and you can see the list of allow service that are configured by default, only one, the ECMP ping. I definitely need to look at more of the firewall using GRC port scanning for all its common service port. We could see that only port 445 was closed. All the other one were in stealth mode and not responding. I did a speed test here and we're getting to around 950 Mbps which is almost the, the max uh, I see with my cable modem and copper lines. You can see here that there's an event log section. So you can see the system events or the device events. There's also a section for reporting. Uh, you can schedule tasks to log certain things and generate a report for it. You can also assign a team member different security role and giving them access to different section of the ingenious cloud. You can also check all your inventory and license in that tab. So what do I think of the ESG 620 gateway from ingenious? Well, first I think there's a lot to like there. You get a fast a quad core CPU at 2.2 gigahertz with eight gig of RAM. So everything feels snappy and responsive. You have one failover or balancing. So you have redundancy if you need. You have a stateful firewall, but I need to play more with the firewall. Also, you get a lot of update uh, since I got the device. So this is what I expect from a device that is for small business to medium business. And you have a five year warranty. So I'm curious to see if the update will keep coming. You get eight port at 2.5 gig and you get two 10 gigs port. So it's a little overkill for a home office setting, but you have a lot of possibility of upgrading your network in the future with it. I mean, you can support 300 VPN tunnel, 1.5, uh, 1.25 million TCP uh, concurrent connection, and 160 VLAN. Of course, I didn't test that yet, and I don't think I will. But it's good to know that, like, it's in another category that a router you can just get. This video was kind of like an introduction about what Ingenious Cloud is. So there's a lot more I would like to test. Uh, one thing that pop is that my uh, NAS has a dual NIC for network aggregation. So instead of having just a one gig connection, I could use two port and put them together to get a two gig connection. So eventually that's something I will test. And then it would be interesting to add a 10 gig card uh, to my PC and just have like 10 gig uh, on the LAN network. And also right now I don't have uh, Wi-Fi because I haven't plugged the access point. So that is the next step to get to test Wi-Fi 7. I'm curious if I'll see a speed increase, but like I was saying previously, the limitation is going to be my internet connection, which is limited at one gig. So I'm already at the limit right now. On the negative side, I understand that we live in a world where everything is a subscription. So I'm not surprised that like 
there's like a subscription if you want firewood the for the firewall level seven instead of level three uh what they call in the interface but and also understand that having maintenance contract to be able to have updates uh it's part uh, part of the corporate world but i didn't like that some feature were locked uh behind the subscription uh, the one that annoyed me the most is the fact that if you want to back up or restore your config, uh, you need to have the subscription. Now, I understand that if you bought, like, I don't know, 50 network switch, you're probably in a maintenance contract and you're just going to copy and restore, you know, you config and do it once. But it's still something I would like to have at least uh, a way to back up and restore for the default user at least for the local device, because I don't want to reconfigure it manually if there would be an issue. Also, it's more like a home office and a loft setting, but the gateway is basically silent, but maybe four times an hour, the fan will start speeding like a jet engine for the first couple seconds, and then it will uh, work for a couple minutes maybe at 40 decibel next to the device, and then the fan will get off again and it would be quiet for another like 20, 30 minutes. So I understand they're giving you brackets. So in, normally it would go in a server rack or it would go in a room where it doesn't impact the user, but I still wish there would be a way to uh, configure the fan curve so it's more progressive when it starts, it's still tolerable. It's just that like being in a loft where everything is open and where the switch end up, uh, no, not the switch, but where the gateway end up being like being 10 feet from the bed, it's a different setting, but I understand that it's not the normal use case for that. Talking to friends that are network engineer, they're like, oh yeah, I put that in a closet. I put that like in a server rack with a closed door and things like that. So just something to keep in mind. I was also talking to Agaster about it and we were trying to figure out what is that product competing with. At the beginning, the first idea was to check Unify and their Dream Max, uh, Dream Machine Pro Max, but uh, that is uh, $7.99 Canadian versus $11.69 for Ingenious. But that machine for the regular port, they all one gig. And our conclusion was that like basically in the corporate world for Gateway, you will have the basic one gig ports everywhere. And if you want that gig everything, it's gonna be way more expensive. So Ingenious seems to play on this and putting like 2.5 ports everywhere, giving you more for the price. And they seem to compete with D-Link or Cisco uh, gateway that, uh, that way. But that was just a quick browsing, trying to figure out like, what is the place of this device? Well, maybe I have more to say uh, in another video. As for the pricing, yeah, you can buy one for 11.69 Canadian if you go on the website, but I don't expect that's the way it work. Uh, normally, uh, if you buy it for business, you will have a representative, and if you buy 10 of them, you would have a discount. So yes, you can technically buy one from the website, but I expecting that the price is more competitive, like if you have a contract with them. So I hope this video was useful. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for engineers for sending uh, the gateway. Now step two, let's configure the access point and get Wi-Fi.